Hi guys, today I am finishing up this painting. I started it last week, so if you'd like to see what I've already painted, go check out that video. But uh, today I'm going to be finishing it up and getting all those little details in there. I am so excited to be able to show you guys the finished product of this piece. But I do want to talk today about getting out of an autopilot slump or hopefully avoiding it altogether. This is something that happens to me all the time and I have to be really self-aware to make sure that I don't just constantly live in that kind of space, which is kind of an, a never-ending battle for me. Uh, but really quickly, this piece is actually going to be the print for April Citrine package over on my Patreon. So if you'd like to get the exclusive print of this, which is actually going to be an 11 by 14, so the full size, make sure to go sign up for the Citrine tier before the end of April 30th, which is the day that this video gets released. So you have not a lot of time, but but anyways, there's a link down in the description that'll take you over to my Patreon where you can check that out and look at the other tiers as well. And uh, uh, yeah, if you'd like to just get this print and then be on your way after this month is over, then that is totally an okay way to make sure that you get this print. Uh, but yeah, let's, uh, let's jump into painting this painting and talking about the topic at hand. So talking about being kind of this like autopilot state with creating artwork, I find that for me, it tends to mean that I rely way too heavily on, on these like pre-programmed ways of drawing certain things that I tend to fall back on. They're kind of like shorthand where I can really quickly and easily create shapes within composition. This is very specific, but but like the way that I draw hair sometimes within pieces and uh, and things like my first take on how I was going to draw these rocks, they tend to be very, very uh, mindless. I tend not to make specific decisions in the moment and I just kind of go off of muscle memory of these shapes and lines that I've drawn countless times before. and. I don't want to make art like that anymore. It really struck me while I was working on the sketch for this piece where I was drawing the rocks in and they were just ending up with the very um, repetitive shapes, very repetitive lines. It felt very, very similar to the way that I just um, draw hair and I, I just kind of get into the zone and I draw these kind of twisty, flowy lines and then that's that. and. When I realized that I was just doing that, that I wasn't making these decisions and they weren't really specific to this piece and to this, this rock formation, I, I realized how frustrating that is and how limiting it can be. I, I, I know for a fact that I limit myself way too often by not being present within the pieces that I'm working on. And I want to change that. I would like to be able to give myself challenges more so that I have something to really just focus on and think about and I have to address and I can't just sit back and uh, yeah, just let it happen. So so yeah, that was, that was the first reminder, a little shock to my system that I was just falling back into that. And I, I find that that tends to, at least the last while tends to be my... Uh, my neutral state. I have to really be very aware of how I'm working on pieces to to not fall into that trap. So, so I need I just need moving forward to be thinking about and prefacing the piece that I'm going to be working on from a how can I how can I make this different? How can I learn from it? How can I make it more challenging? And specifically in this piece, the thing that I decided to make sure I was focusing on is I wanted to really study the references for the rocks so that I could get a better shape language of how these specific rock formations near the ocean looked like so that I could add that to my my mental arsenal of of line shapes so that so that while I'm working on this piece I can create things that look more like those rocks but also hopefully in the future, when I'm working on things that are similar at all, instead of just falling back on that one way of doing these relatively sloppy lines, I can have a little bit more in my brain, even if it's just having something in there that I know is a possibility. And then I can go back to the reference and I can 
build back up on it. But, but I'm hoping that the more that I think about these things, the more I'll be able to catch myself from falling back into that same rhythm. And I talked a bit about this in the last video about how I was working on new textures for the piece. That was another thing that, that I found I, I just wasn't really addressing with the way that I work on my pieces. There are so many different ways that I can utilize the watercolors in a way that's much more lively within a piece, but also a lot more interesting for me to work with. And uh, I think that all of these components like that, that I can look for and pick out and really focus on, on doing things differently, all of those things are going to make creating artwork much more exciting and interesting. I already felt so much more focused and connected with this piece than I have in a lot of pieces, simply by virtue of the fact that I, I was giving myself new challenges that I had to be really present with. And uh, I loved that. I loved feeling like I was experimenting and learning new things. And I loved watching it transform different surfaces. It was so much fun to be able to work on, on the water in this piece and to create those little tiny waves and watch as it uh, just created more and more depth and texture and interest to it. And then working on the mermaid's tail, I, I loved that being able to go in with the tiniest brush that I own and adding these really tiny little scales and then building up where there would be highlights and then the mid-tones and then having these scales in this darker shadow area. It just really, yeah, transformed that, that area on the piece where normally I might have just autopiloted working on it or I might have just gone in with some wet on wet washes and just let the watercolor do its own thing and then called it good and then moved on. But because I was being a lot more proactive with the way that I was painting that tail and thinking about it and planning on it before I even started painting it, it, uh, it ended up being something that I was a lot more excited about and I really enjoyed painting it. And really, I think moving forward with being more, more present with my pieces is that it has to come in the sketch phase. I have to be able to think it through while I'm drawing things out because that's, that's really the foundation of a piece is that that sketch and that refined drawing is I, I need to be able to put in better details and more interesting shapes from the very beginning. But it also allows me in cases like this where I can actually plan out where I want there to be new texture and and it helps me to create a list of what are things that I need to go and look at reference and what things do I need to study before I even start painting this. And that gives me a chance to get a better plan of say how I'm going to lay out values or what are some pitfalls that I might have like repeating patterns that are too similar or creating textures that are just too over overworked so that there's no room to breathe within that texture. Uh, yeah, so, so yeah, <laughs> being planned ahead, being self-aware, those are all things that that moving forward, I really want to do more of. I, I want to feel present. I know I keep saying that, but but I find that it's just so easy when it's uh, time to sit down and draw for me to just check out and kind of turn off that, that part of my brain that, that's thinking more dynamically about my pieces. And that takes away a lot of the fun. A lot of the fun of artwork, for me at least, is is uh, learning new things and watching myself progress and, and seeing something happen on a painting and thinking, wow, I, I learned something there and now this piece is better because of it. And I can use that on the next piece. And then it starts snowballing and it makes me think of, well, what are new pieces I can do that can specifically shine under that new technique? Or how can I adapt that technique to something new and different? And that's really, I think, the key to me enjoying my artwork is, is really seeking out those those new learning experiences and then, and then utilizing them and then finding new ways to enhance the work that I'm doing with it. But uh, not to get overly philosophical, but I I think that this concept is something that that overall I can really struggle with with uh, my life in general. So it's no surprise that it might bleed over into the way that I create artwork. So yeah, I would really prefer to live each day where I'm just 
I'm in the moment, I'm in the present, I'm not getting too caught up in in checking out or looking at future problems, but more I'm looking at what can I do to enjoy this moment or what can I do to enhance what's happening. And I find that really exciting. I, I loved working on this piece with all of these new challenges and new things that I could explore. It, it kept me on my toes, which was something that I haven't I, I feel every once in a while little moments within the piece, but I felt like overall working on this piece put me into that mindset where where I, I felt like I was just really seeking new knowledge and that was exciting and I loved that feeling. And if you'd like a print of this piece, make sure to sign up for the Citrine tier by the end of April 30th. That's today if you're watching this video when it goes live. That's the Citrine tier again over on my Patreon. There's a link down in the description that'll take you over there if you're interested. And I have the original painting available at my shop and that link is in the description as well. But as always, I wanna give a huge thank you to my patrons. You guys are absolutely incredible and I can't thank you enough for all the support that you show me. You help me to be able to make these paintings and uh, yeah, you are amazing. Uh, but that's it for today. So I will be back next time with some more painting.